know, whatever major you're in right now, you need to sit down and ask yourself, is this major going to help me in five, 10 years when I leave college? Yeah. And if you don't think so, whatever major it is, switch gears today, wherever yeah. that camera is, switch that gear, yeah. find a major that's really going to help you and your family in the future. Don't care about how hard it is. Who cares? Okay. Mm -hmm. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Start studying for it, you know, and leave that camp campus with a degree that you can really, really use that help you. Welcome back to League Biz. I'm your host, Dennis Botang, And today we're going to have such an amazing conversation. We have beautiful guests, that being Erica and Deji. Uh, thank you guys so much. As you know, this is League Biz, where we talk about the business of basketball. And uh, I want to ask you guys questions that can help some of our viewers understand what you do and how they can get involved in the business of basketball. Erica, you're with the Atlanta Hawks, Director of Player Development. Tell us a little bit about your experience there, how you got there. How I got there. Well, I'll tell you what I do first. Mm -hmm. So as a director of player engagement, mm -hmm. I'm the liaison between the business side and the basketball side as it relates to players, coaches, and their families. So I work closely with the players on their marketing, their community outreach, um, their branding, and how the team utilizes them. And then I also work with the families and just making sure that, you know, that their needs are taken care of and that they feel like they're part of the organization throughout throughout the year, really. And as well as working with the coaches, um, helping them plan their appearances and things like that. And whenever you started, did you think that you were uh, always gonna be in that role? Was this something that you were looking forward to? Yeah. No, actually, no. Um, it was just one of those things that kind of fell in my lap. And, you know, it's all about timing. It's usually all about timing. Yeah. So I, that's not a, a role that I had planned on, but I've had that experience um, in my previous roles uh, with the Atlanta Braves mm -hmm. and with the Miami Heat. And so I've had that experience working with players, coaches, and their families. So it was a natural fit when the opportunity came about. Wow, that's great. So experience got you there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Experience and opportunity and yeah. timing. No, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's great. Deji, you're a financial advisor, but you've also been involved in the game of basketball uh, with the Clippers and everything. Did you always have a passion for finances or was it something that you always knew you wanted to do? Um, I, I, I went to school for finance. You know, mm -hmm. I played college ball, but I also was, I have a finance degree uh, while I was in college. Uh, finance, I was always a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. uh, finance is something I've always kind of loved. Uh, both my parents were accountants. So, uh, and basketball was my passion. So I worked in, you know, as a financial analyst, I did the corporate finance thing. I worked in basketball with my MBA stint. And, you know, both of them were, you know, they were kind of like, oh yeah, I enjoyed a little bit, I enjoyed this. And then, you know, as cliche as it sounds, being able to merge both worlds together was, I feel like, was my calling. And since, you know, I was able to merge those two and work in basketball, work with basketball players with finance. It's been, it's been like, you know, a dream job that yeah. it doesn't even feel like work for me. Do you see a lot of similarities when it comes to working in the numbers, crunching the numbers, and then also working on the player side of things? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's always similarities. Everything, you know, they both require discipline mm. uh, at, a, at a high level. And, you know, they both, they both require strategy. You have a goal on both sides. You have a goal as a basketball player, as a basketball team, things you're trying to achieve. Financially, on the business side as well, you have goals and targets you're trying to meet as well. So actually, it's funny as you said, they both really, there is a lot of synergy in both of them. Yeah, I had to ask just because <laughs> I'm not a math person. Yeah. Erica, I don't know if you're I'm a math person. I'm not a math person either. <laughs> not a math person. I, yeah, I had to ask, man, if you're dreaming about numbers and bouncing the ball <laughs> or trying to make, make it, make it uh, shake or make it happen in both worlds, so I had yeah. to ask. Erica, you mentioned uh, about branding uh, when it comes to players or organization. That's very huge and important, mm -hmm. especially in the time that we're living in. Uh, living in. Uh, talk a little bit about the importance of branding. Well, I think um, branding is very important as it relates to these players, um, you know, because they all have different personalities. They all want to do things in the community and there's, you know, everybody wants a piece of them. And so mm -hmm. they have an image to uphold, you know, mm -hmm. and they it, it's important for them to help them create and craft that image that is beneficial to them and that shows them in a good light in the community. So um, you have different, you know, different players have different wants, different needs, you know, mm -hmm. um, some are more um, intentional about 
their branding than mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. You know, some some guys are really lean. You know, they really don't. Um, I'm not gonna say they don't care, but you know, but they all know that it's important to be able to, you know, really show them in a good light and help them just craft their image um, and project it out to the community in a positive way. Do you think that you as a person who's in the business of basketball, do you think it's important for someone who would like to be in your shoes to also build a brand of themselves too on how they show up? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, mm. you have to, I mean, you have to build your own brand. And now in the days of, um, you know, technology, social media and all that, it's it's more important now than ever. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people are watching you from the minute you step in the door, not even from the minute you email and reach out to yeah. a person, mm -hmm. minute you call somebody, you know, people are watching you and, and your brand is being created and formed constantly. So um, as a person who wants to get into this business, um, you have to be you have to be aware of that, aware of what you portray, who you who you speak to, how you speak to them, you know, um, how you follow follow through um, and all those different types of things. So yeah. it's very important so in true. any industry. Yeah, so no, true. I'm sure you can relate to that being a collegiate athlete. Yeah but also majoring in finance. You built the brand, I'm sure, on the court and off the court. How'd you go about that to get to where you are? Um, I mean, it's, it's like she said, you know, uh, the moment somebody's even trying to reach you or, you know, find out about you. I mean, I have a situation where I hadn't even met somebody and the first time I met them, they were talking about, you know, I've been on your, on your social media, I've searched you, I saw your, your daughter, she's mm -hmm. beautiful. And I'm just like, whoa, you know, the night. So <laughs> I think upholding, you know, your brand, like she said, you know, carrying yourself a certain way is, is extremely important for yeah. sure in this yeah. business. I want to ask you about your background too. Okay. Um, you're born in Nigeria, correct? Um, but are you Igbo or Yoruba? Yoruba. Okay. Okay. See, there we go. <laughs> I knew a little bit. Yeah, there about we go. Nigeria. See, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, t talk about your upbringing. Obviously, you you mentioned your both of your parents were accountants. Yeah. Um, so where did basketball come in for you? <laughs> I mean, accounts like, you know, they were just, you know, accounts in Nigeria. That's, I mean, a lower level, probably damn near mm. trying to make ends meet. Mm. But um, yeah, wow. I grew up in Nigeria. I was born there, uh, raised there most of my life until high school. Uh, humble beginnings. My parents couldn't, you know, afford for me to ever get to the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up playing soccer. Uh, and then one day I was just watching the 1998, I'll never forget the All-Star game, and I just saw Kobe there. And I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. the way they spoke about him, there's the youngest out there, he got some swag. I'm like, I might need to try this sport. I might, you know, yeah. started playing basketball, fell in love with it. One thing led to another. I was good enough where high schools were reaching out to me from there. And, you know, they started telling my parents, like, yo, your son has a possibility to, to go to the U.S. to play for, wow. and for free. You know, like, you guys don't have to pay anything. My mom was like, you guys stop making this up. <laughs> Long story short, me being able to play basketball is what got me a scholarship. Basketball just got me to where I am right now sitting today. High school scholarship, college scholarship, my MBA, all that basketball is what wow. did that for me. So it literally paved the way, for gave everything. you opportunities, and now you're sitting here yeah. crunching numbers. Four basketball, Four basketball players. Man, yeah. that, so, that, if that's not beautiful, I don't know what to call it, right? Yeah, it's definitely a blessing. I wake up every day, you know, with, with, with a lot of gratitude. Even yesterday when I was, you know, coming out here, I was just like, if I literally did not know how to play basketball, I'd probably be doing a regular job in Africa. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have been able to get on a plane. So. Wow, wow, yeah. that, that's, that's amazing, inspiring as well. Erica, let's talk a bit uh, about your background. Uh, how'd you grow up? Was there love or inspiration from basketball around you? So I grew up in Toledo, Ohio, mm -hmm. and I come from a basketball family. So mm -hmm. my dad um, was an All-American at Western Michigan University. Oh, wow. Um, he's the only player to, ha to have had his jersey retired there. Oh, wow. He was the leading scorer in the nation for two years yeah. um, back in the 60s. So all his friends are basketball. They're agents. They're former college players. He didn't make it to the pros back then because there was not a lot of opportunities for African-Americans, and mm -hmm. he was a guard. Mm -hmm. um, but... With that, my brother played college ball. So I've been around basketball all my life. My nephews have played college ball. Yeah. Um, so I just ended up, um, I got my master, my bachelor's in education. 
And while I was um, an undergrad at University of Central Florida, I did stats for the men's basketball team. Mm -hmm. And um, that led me to do stats for the Orlando Magic. And from there, I got a chance to meet a lot of people at the Magic organization. And I thought, you know what? I would like to work in sports. What does that look like? Because right now I'm an education major. So I went to uh, St. Thomas University, got my master's in sports management and um, got my first role in sports was with the Miami Heat as an intern. Mm -hmm. And from there, I was hired on full time and pretty much been in sports ever since. I did um, basketball, then I did a little corporate PR, then I got into baseball, mm -hmm. did baseball uh, community relations for about 14 years, and then had the chance to get back into basketball. Wow, <laughs> talk about a resume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were there uh, times where, you know, just going through all that, where you felt like, man, am I gonna be able to make like a difference here? Especially as a black woman too. We know that there have been struggles in sports for black women, but you are here. So you're inspiring some other black girl or black boy. Um, what are some of the challenges that you face? You know, I, I had a lot of mentors in sports, you know, male, female, um, black, white. Mm -hmm. um, I really feel like Along my way, it's really been, I wouldn't say they were challenges, mm -hmm. um, you know, but I've, I've honed my craft, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I've made the point to establish relationships. Yes. Um, just about all the jobs that I've had have come because of relationships. That's good. Um, so that's something important. So I really, you know, just focused on that, doing the best work that I can do and just being serious about, you know, about what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, you know, just thinking just in general obstacles, you know, there's always obstacles for females in um, in sports. Yep. Um, but I think it's important to connect with people, not only mentors, but people that sponsor you as mm -hmm. well. And sponsor meaning people who can advocate for you mm -hmm. um, and, you know, kind of help you along the way. Mm -hmm. So um, I wouldn't say there's been a lot of obstacles for me, you know, knock on wood, I've been lucky. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've also been prepared too. So. Yeah, so preparation, a foundation, yep. relationships. Yeah, and just being in intentional about um, about what it is that I'm doing and taking my job seriously and doing the work. Mm -hmm. You know, um, not cutting corners mm -hmm. and, you know, just being, you know, doing things halfway and just being serious about what I do and, you know, showing up with, you know, um, a, a good attitude. Mm -hmm meeting people, um, just trying to do as much as I can to make to make my mark and show people that I'm, I'm serious about what I do. I'm just, I'm not in this just for the glamour, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and All-Star Weekend and, mm -hmm. and the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, working in sports, it's not, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. Yes, no. there are fun parts, yeah. but it's, um, it's a lot of long hours. Yeah. I mean, a lot of long hours, yeah. you work constantly. Um, and you know, it's, it's hard work now with, we're not, you know, curing science or cur yeah, curing yeah. cancer. It's not yeah. rocket science, but you know, it's, um, you have to just be intentional about what it is you're doing and have a love, love for sports. As yeah. Well too, so. I mean, essentially too, in your position, like it's a community that you're yeah. overseeing, taking care of and helping. Yeah. And yeah. with my background in community relations, you know, not only, I mean, a lot of what I've done is not, it's not even about what's going on on the court. Mm -hmm. It's about helping people in the community, yeah. help, you know, um, providing an opportunity for kids to get scholarships and, mm -hmm. you know, um, cancer patients and putting a smile on their faces and, um, you know, different things like that, really trying to make a better life for, for those that might be less fortunate too. Mm -hmm. So that's been a lot of my focus at all. It just so happens that it was on behalf of a sports team. Yeah, so. yeah, well, that's, that's very inspiring. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy. I'm back. Dennis Botang here with DraftKings. Shout out to DraftKings. As you know, I'm doing something amazing with them. And you want to know why? It's because the biggest tournament in college basketball is underway and the action is getting started. It's just getting started. I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook and right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will instantly receive $150 in bonus bets. All you have to do is download the DraftKings app now and sign up using my code biz. 
That's right. New customers can bet just $5 on anything and receive $150 in bonus bets instantly. Stay in on the action and use that $150 in bonus bets on DraftKings same game parlays for a shot at an even bigger payout. Combine multiple bets together from the same game, including total points scored, number of rebounds, plus more. If sports betting is not yet available in your state though, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win cash prizes. All you have to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook right now. New customers use my promo code biz and bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code biz only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, Deji, what are some of the challenges that you faced, or if any, yeah. uh, while pretty much uh, climbing the ladder, yeah. uh, in sort of speak? So, what's some of the ones that you? Um, I mean, found? for me, is you know where I came from uh, to where I am today. I've, I've, there was really not anybody that I could even look at that's there that I'm like, I'm trying to be like him. Mm -hmm. That came from, you know, my beginning basketball background from Africa and I was a financial advisor for, for guys and I, there was nobody to follow. Yeah. Uh, so most guys that come from where I'm from, you know, that get opportunity to come to US and play basketball. Uh, after basketball is either they go play in Europe or, you know, they try to work in the NBA in the front office uh, or they try to become an agent. But financial advisor, you know, the cliche is always, you know, basketball guys aren't that smart. Mm -hmm. So for me from day one, you know, when I even step foot on I went to LMU, you know, mm -hmm. Loyola Marymount. When I stepped foot on there, uh, they told me the business program was one of the best in the country. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I want, I'm going to the business school. The coaches were like, are you sure? I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get a business degree even though I'm playing basketball here. Yeah. I always, I always like to look five, six years ahead of where I'm at. Yeah. So, and I knew, you know, when I'm done playing basketball, I don't just want to be stuck. Like, am I going to Europe? Am I going to try to coach somewhere? No, I, I was one of those guys where I wanted to always change that narrative of basketball players are not smart. Like I was the guy telling my team, like, listen, you know, they said volleyball or water polo had the highest GPA. Why don't we try to beat that next year? Mm. So getting my degree as much as as, 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 as as playing basketball was something that, you know, so, and I found that lane that I'm like, you know, being able to combine basketball and finance something, I wanted to do that. There's nobody there like me, but I wanted to do that. Yeah. And that's why I have a foundation now back home where you know, I go every year in the summer in Nigeria and I talk to these kids like, listen, you know, the Joel Embiid's, you know, the the Luke Bamuse's, the Jonathan Kamingas of the world, you know, Akeem Olajuwon, those guys are one in a billion. Like, yeah. you, we might never find another one. Yeah. But you can find one, You, if it's 100 people here at this camp, you probably can find 100 of me if you put your heart to it. You can play basketball, use it as a tool mm -hmm. to get free education and try to be something on yourself. That's very possible and attainable. And that's kind of why I try to teach, so. Yeah. The barriers was just, you know, I had no blueprint to follow. And, you know, hopefully I can lay that blueprint down for the next yeah. couple guys coming. Uh, I think you've definitely built the blueprint. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you have definitely built the blueprint being around the game of basketball, uh, being around people, building relationships, uh, being leaders. Um, I think you're definitely leaving some trails. <laughs> and that's why we're here. Yeah. Um, I want to ask uh, you, Erica, being with the Atlanta Hawks, we know that Atlanta is a very, very, very dope city. There's a lot of <laughs> right. things going on uh, culturally. How are you able to keep up with that to then um, help uh, the, the organization? You know what? Um, so it's interesting because Atlanta, you know, as you said, has a lot of culture. We, you know, we have music, we have film, um, we got a lot going on. Yeah. Um, I, one of the things that I do, I invite, um, high profile people to come in and talk to our players. Mm -hmm. um, we've had Hank Aaron, he came because of my ties with the Braves, he came mm -hmm. to visit. We've had Ambassador Young, mm -hmm. we're looking at um, Will Packer, Steve Harvey, people like mm -hmm. that. We bring mm -hmm. them in and come talk to, you know, um, they come and talk to the guys just about what it means to be a part of Atlanta, mm -hmm. to show them that, okay, you might not be from here, but you're here now mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, you're part of this, you know, the fabric of this community. Yeah. So, um, you know, we try and do different different things like that to ensure that they know that, you know, they're part of the community and that this team is. A lot of these people in the um, in Atlanta, they come to our games constantly. So, 
you know, they sit courtside, they meet the players, they're mm -hmm. the, the rappers, the singers, mm -hmm. the movie stars, the, um, you know, filmmakers, everybody. So, I mean, it, there's a lot going on um, for sure in Atlanta, but, um, you know, I just keep my ear to the ground, make sure I'm networking with people. Mm -hmm. um, actually, one thing that we're doing for business of basketball is so every team has to pre uh, provide a business of basketball kind of like course to the players. So mm -hmm. this year, what we're doing is we're taking our players to um, a music studio. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to meet with local producers. Mm -hmm. And so they can see how music and basketball intertwine. Wow. And how all that music that we play in the arena, yeah. you know, how that comes about. It's not it's not as easy as just put the song on. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's a lot of legalities and a lot of things like that. Mm -hmm. So we just try and keep it interesting so they'll know that they're, you know, immersed into the community. That's it's actually cool. really cool. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. I, I love that because then you're, you're educating your, mm -hmm. your players, which I think, right. I mean, me being on the outside, I, I don't work with a team. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes the only education that these players are might be getting yeah. would be from a, an advisor that yeah. they're working yeah. with financially. Yeah. But I didn't know that that education was going yeah. on. Yeah. Well, so we we talk to the players. Um, you know, at the beginning of the year, I'll sit down with them and find out. You know, what are your interests? Mm -hmm. They're all going to have different interests. Is it entertainment? Is it financial? Um, you know, financial uh, education, financial literacy. literacy. Um, is it broadcasting? What do you want to do after your career is over? And so we talk to them about all of those things and then look at ways that we can bring those to them mm -hmm. or take them out into the community, community mm -hmm. to that, just to give them an additional you know, exposure and just help them think about things off the court so that mm -hmm. they're not always, it's not all basketball yeah. all day, every day. Um, we want to try and you know broaden their horizons and get them involved in some other things, but based on what they say they're interested in. Mm -hmm. well, that's really good because uh, conversations sometimes too are with some of these young players. They play basketball for so long. Yeah. Their life that, is just It's like basketball. that's all they know. That's yeah, they, yeah. yeah. And that's why we try and expose them to things, especially mm -hmm. the younger guys. It's usually the, um, the rookies, the first and second year guys, mm -hmm. we pay special attention mm -hmm. to them to show them that there's more than, you know, yeah. more than just basketball. And um, there's some other things that you can do and that you should be looking at doing as your as your career goes on. And then you start to see the change in um, in the players as they get older. You get you start to see the change in their mindset. Mm -hmm. Then they start asking you, oh, you know what? I'm thinking about going back to school. I want to take a class this summer. Can you help me, mm -hmm. you know, enroll back in school or things like nice. that? No, that's amazing. Deji, financial literacy. <laughs> we got to talk about it. Okay. I mean, from a business of basketball standpoint, very important, but everybody can benefit wow. from it. Um, how do you see the difference when educating or managing uh, players, um, but also the importance of everybody else learning? I mean, it's just important, uh, regardless of how much you make. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's about, you, everybody should have some form of financial literacy education. You know, yeah. like you just can't be out here just, you know, mm -hmm. let's say you do make $50,000 a year or $40,000 a year, and there's somebody that makes 10, $20 million a year, you should be able to financially handle your aspect of what your income is, you know, mm -hmm. understand how, you know, bills work, understand how taxes work, understand how, you know, you start your business, understand how LLCs work, the structures of that, just, you know, financial literacy, I feel like at least to a, a, a base, mm -hmm. everybody should have that in every community, especially yeah. our community. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. And how do you, do you see a lot of uh, athletes or even parents or whoever that's around them finding more interest once they interact with you? I feel like the right ones do. Yeah. Uh, the right ones do. Um, when they see, obviously, uh, their family member or friend come into a bunch of wealth and they have a team that's helping them, you know, the proper way. Yeah. You know, they also, you know, some of them have people around them that are, you know, regular parents that, that have regular yeah. jobs and you always hear it all the time, man, I might need to come see you. you know? Yeah. I might need to come talk to you. I like what you're doing here. I like how, you know, you're helping my family member, how you're helping this person. I've seen the transition, the change in their lives. I need to come talk to you. So it definitely rubs off on the right people mm -hmm. because everybody needs some type of financial help in their life and structure. Yeah. How does it make you feel? I mean, it makes me feel good because, um, you know, what I do is directly, it's, it's, it has a direct impact on players directly. So mm -hmm. uh, if I see that I'm being able to help all the guys that we work with, able to help them financially create that structure in their life, better their life, 
and you got family members, you know, that are that are that are that want that kind of help too. And you know, it's, it's it makes me feel good that I know what I'm doing and what my team is doing is is having a positive impact on a player and their family and friends. I mean, what else can you ask for? That's my job. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Well, what are some of the things that you guys would change about your jobs, if anything? I mean, we're constantly changing things. <laughs> so it's not like, you know, I, you know, she probably might be able to have that because she works for a huge organization, like a team. Mm -hmm. You know, there might be corporate structures of stuff that she would like to change. On my end, um, I feel like I'm changing stuff every day. Mm. Uh, everybody's different. Yeah. You know, there's not one set of structure or anything for for one person that goes for all. It's mm -hmm. all different with everybody. There's changes coming every day, there's things. So we, I mean, I'm problem solving on a daily basis. Yeah. So whatever Constantly. needs to be, yeah, whatever needs to be changed, whatever needs to be adjusted, we're doing that on a daily basis. I think, um, I don't know that I would say there's anything I'd like to change, but I would like to just continue growing and learning mm -hmm. um, along with, like I went to the NBA Tech Summit yesterday mm -hmm. and learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just realize there's so much out there as it relates to technology mm -hmm. um, that I don't know, mm -hmm. that I need to know. So, you know, I just want to continue growing and learning so that I can um, it can help me in my role. It can help me help them. Yeah. You know, help help the guys and their families as as the world is just evolving and new things are are, are coming out every day and just staying on top of the trends, mm -hmm. um, staying on top of what's new. So I can, you know, it'll help me work closely and better with them. Yeah. Yo, 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 what's good guys? It's your boy Dennis Botang here from league biz in partnership with DraftKings. so big shout out to DraftKings, and you know what i'm here to do if you've been watching you know i'm here to talk about my picks you know what i'm saying you guys know uh basketball is still going on still exciting games are getting more exciting more physical these guys are going at it and i am so excited to be sitting here and give you my picks for the week all right let's talk about march 15th okay so we have atlanta against utah we have Miami versus Detroit. We got Phoenix versus Charlotte. We got Orlando versus Toronto. We got LA versus New Orleans. We got Denver versus San Antonio. And these are all great matchups, but you know what's gonna happen. Somebody's gotta win and somebody's gotta lose. And I'm here to make my picks and on who I think is going to win or lose. Um, so without wasting any time, let's get into it. Atlanta versus Utah okay so that right there you know I'm gonna keep it simple straight to the point I'm calling it Atlanta on this one even though um you know uh they don't really look the best um I believe that they they're gonna battle they're gonna battle it out um and this is no knock to to Utah either as I'm looking it looks like you know um they're both around the same place um, as far as like, uh, you know, conferences go as far as placement. I believe Atlanta's 10 and uh, Utah is like 11 in the West. So it's OK. It's all right. You know, just take this L. It's all it's all, it's all going to work out. But I'm going with Atlanta on this one. Now, let's move on. Miami versus Detroit. Now, Miami is uh, one of those teams. They're, they're very physical especially around this time of the year look they they're already a pretty good team they're physical like i said play great defense um and with with the type of leadership that they have from the front office down to the the, the person who cleans the locker room you know what i'm saying they got it down packed so they're all about winning they're all about doing things the right way but being physical and having a little swag while they're doing it as well um i know that detroit has had a, you know a few frustrations um it's been a crazy season for them um i know they're trying to build over there um they got a lot of talented young guys it's just that they're just trying to get it together maybe they need to get a few more pieces there but um it's not going to happen this season so i'm going with miami there phoenix versus charlotte uh charlotte um they're a scrappy team too they got some shooters they got some physical guys um, but you can you it, it's come on it's march you're not gonna mess with phoenix they are ready to make a statement um also too when we look 
uh, Charlotte is like they're not gonna go. I don't. I don't believe they're about to make any crazy changes and, and wow anybody out of the East, um, respectfully. Um, and then you know, as far as Phoenix goes, I mean, come on, they 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 have an opportunity. Phoenix got it. Uh, let's talk about Orlando versus Toronto. You know, as I've said this before, Toronto, I think they're still trying to figure it out after having uh, pieces just kind of leave and bounce. And they're not, don't get me wrong now. They're not that, they're not that bad. I just think it's just rebuilding for them and their culture. Uh, so I, I got Orlando uh, winning that game, taking it away, uh, just because I feel like those guys, you know, they got it together. They, they got a system going on and I like it. I like how they play. I like how they move the ball around. They got good defense as well. So, um, I, I like Orlando winning this one. We got LA, <laughs> LAC uh, versus uh, New Orleans, right? Yeah, that, that was going to be a dope matchup. You know, one thing I love about New Orleans is that they got a chip on their shoulder too. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they, they're not no easy um, team to just beat. I'm not going to say that. But LA, I mean, they're deep, man. They, they got ballers and they're all healthy, which is scary. Um, you know, I said this, they're, they're, a, a, they're that team that you got to beat, in my opinion. So um, I, I'm going to say that this is going to be an amazing matchup, uh, but I'm going to go with LA on this one. And finally, we have Denver versus San Antonio. There's nothing here to talk about, really. I know San Antonio, um, they, you know, they have an amazing player there that has a amazing uh, uh, career ahead of him. I, I believe they're trying to build around him. Um, this season has been a tough one for them. Um, I believe, that, yeah, they're dead last on, in, in the Western Conference. Uh, so I'm not really worried about Denver. I mean, look, they, they are defending champs. Um, and I believe they still got that, you know, they, they still got their chin up. You know, uh, 10 toes down and they're still like, hey, whoever wants to challenge us, come on with it because we're ready to ball out. We're ready to go get this chip. So um, I'm picking Denver. Um, they're an amazing team. They got it together. So those are the picks uh, from your boy, Dennis Botang. Uh, to you guys, now it's your turn to make your picks. And you know you got to do that with DraftKings. So make sure that you download the app and do your thing. The crown is yours. Peace. For a, uh, you know, college sophomore right now who's probably wondering, like, man, I don't know what, you know, how I can get where you guys are. They're in their major. They're trying to figure out internships. Mm -hmm. What type of advice would you give them? Um, for me, you know, I, 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 a lot of times I go talk to college basketball players because that's like my field, that's my experience. And I always tell them, man, I see it all the time. Um, like for example, when I was a senior, I had an injury, so I had a fifth year. And you know, it's never happened before mm -hmm. in, my, in that school where a basketball player gets a, a fifth year and he goes and wants to get an MBA. Mm. You know, most guys, you know, they want to use a fifth year, I'm gonna get an education master's being paid for. I'm sitting here, I'm like, I have one more year they're giving me. A master's year costs like hundred thousand dollars. Mm. Why don't I start my MBA? I start studying for the, you know, the the, the the test. I take like, you know, the exam, and the coaches are like, "What's wrong with this dude?" You know, <laughs> a full time MBA course, even if you're not an athlete, is two classes a semester. I'm playing basketball. I'm the captain. I'm playing thirty five minutes a game, and I'm taking four classes. Wow. I'm doing two. You can call that what double. Uh, uh, what double full time? Yeah, you know. I, so I go in there. I just tell them, listen, man, you, you're you're there. You're getting free education. I know people that have been out of school for thirty years and still paying student loans. Yeah. You know, a lot of these college basketball players. The advice I have for them is, you got to take full advantage of that. When you're in college and you're getting your education paid for, don't go take no BS major that you're not going to use. Mm -hmm. Always tell myself, where do I want to be five, ten years from now? Do I want to be in business? I'm going to go go to the business school, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, marketing, finance. You know, it's getting paid for the school. I mean, like they say, they're going to use you for your talent on the court. So you want to leave that school, whether you, it's less than 1% of the guys, you know, that are going pro. It's 60 yeah. people that get drafted every year, 30 first rounders, 14 lottery picks. You know, it turns over. Imagine 60 players getting drafted and there's thousands of college basketball players think they're going to the league. Yeah. So my advice, you know, to a sophomore that's in school right now, 
that's a basketball player on a scholarship is, you know, whatever major you're in right now, you need to sit down and ask yourself, is this major gonna help me in five, 10 years when I leave college? Mm -hmm. And if you don't think so, whatever major it is, switch gears today, wherever yeah. that camera is, switch that gear, yeah. find a major that's just really gonna help you and your family in the future. Don't care about how hard it is, who cares, okay? Mm -hmm. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Start studying for it, you know, and leave that camp campus with a degree that you can really, really use that help your life. And yeah, and also too, before you answer, mm -hmm. the reason why I chose sophomore too, is because that's around that time where you yeah. only got two more years. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You know, left to really make a, a dent into that. Where you can still career. change your exactly. major. You know, you can still change your major. It's so funny. When you talk to even when you go take when you go do your masters right now, when you go do an MBA, you're sitting there in classes with you know, 40 people that didn't have a business undergrad, mm. psychology, philosophy, mm. everybody wants to come and get a master's in business, yeah. you know? So if you have an opportunity to get an undergrad business degree, why not just go get it when it's being paid for? That's right. Think about all these schools these guys are at. People are at Duke, uh, Stanford, uh, uh, just a Loyola Marymount, the mm. school I went to, tuition a year, board and everything is like $100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So four years of education for free. I mean, with uh, room and board and everything comes out to 500 grand. Are you gonna come out of there with a degree you're not gonna use? Yeah. Come on, man. You gotta make it make sense. Yeah, you're not going to the league, you know? You might, <laughs> yeah. but what if you don't? Like a lot of guys now. walking yeah. around, you know, they always have only plan A's. Oh, you know, you gotta have, you know, what's your plan B? Yeah. So definitely my advice is, you know, shift gears and start, you know, don't just think about the four years you're in college. Think about the five years when you get out. Yeah. Erica, what would be your advice? Some of my advice would be um, get as much experience as you can in the sports and entertainment industry, if you want to work in sports and entertainment while you're in school. Um, the first thing to do is start with your school's athletic department. Mm -hmm. That sports right there, it's yeah. right at your fingertips. Um, you know, there might be places in town, like the local sports teams, you might have to pass out flyers, you can sell tickets, just get immersed in anything in sports and entertainment that you can, even if you have to volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, Atlanta, we have like a, uh, the Peachtree Road Race. They're always looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. But once you start getting that, those type of things on your resume, people understand that you, they know that you understand what this world is all about. Mm -hmm. um, because like I said earlier, it's not, it's not all fun and games and glamorous. It's a lot of hard work. So I know when I uh, would hire for interns and trainees, the resumes that I would look at that would catch my eye were those where these kids have had experience in this. They know this world, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, um, you gotta get your experience however you can get it. Um, you gotta network with as many people as possible. Um, you, you utilize LinkedIn, wealth of knowledge on LinkedIn. Um, there's people, there's events, all sorts of things on there. But, um, you know, and also I would say, a lot of times you have students that say, I wanna work for a basketball team. I wanna work in the NBA. Um, almost just like players, you know, there's, on, there's only so many jobs in the NBA. So you got hundreds of thousands of people want to work in the NBA. Don't narrow your sights on just the NBA. If you want to work in sports, you need to, you know, sports pretty much it's the same concept mm -hmm. against basketball, football, baseball, different sport, but same concept. Community relations in baseball is the same as it is in basketball, yeah. you know? So um, broaden your, your horizons, broaden your options. And look at um, look at those non-traditional sports that you think of. Look at you know um, lacrosse, mm. pickleball is coming out. Yeah. Um, you know, look at soccer. Mm -hmm. Don't just say basketball or that's it. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, because what's going to happen is when you get marketing experience in pickleball, and then the marketing job in basketball comes up, you'll have a better chance of yeah. getting Definitely. that interview because they'll see they've done marketing in sports. Yeah. So that is great advice from both of you guys. Uh, I want to ask you one final question, um, which is simply what other advice would you like to leave us with uh, when it comes to getting involved or building a foundation, building a brand? Uh, whatever advice is, you know, I mean, you just got to set your mind to it. You know, like I said, um, there was nobody like me that I could look up to. Like, man, you know, like I said, he played basketball. He's from Africa. He's a financial advisor handling, you know, professional athletes, but it's like, that's kind of what I wanted to do. And yeah. you just gotta, I mean, you gotta work. Like yeah. she said, you know, I've had a front office experience, unseen hours. I mean, people don't go home mm -hmm. seven days a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I was going to the office on Sunday morning, wow. Saturday, Sunday morning, yeah. there's no days off, like literally, you know, 
Uh, you game nights, you're coming home at 10 p.m. Yep. So there's a lot of work, even where I'm at, you know, you gotta get a finance degree, you gotta get your master's, like, you gotta work. And then now, going out there, you know, you're a young black man or, you know, you're trying to go let people understand that, okay, this is what I do. I'm trying to represent you. You walk in a, fam you walk in a household with a family and they're looking at you like, you know, why should we work with you? Like, yeah. who's this? You know, you walk in, you call it, who's this? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's going to take a lot of work. You know, it's going to be a lot of rejection. But if, if that's really what you want to do, you can't give up, man. You got to set your mind to it and you just got to go. You got to, you got to, you got to dream, you got to dream big. And I think um, one of the things I think I touched on, um, networking is, is everything. And um, I learned this in, in grad school, uh, you know, the saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm -hmm. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. Oh, wow. mm. So you have to take it upon yourself to make sure that people know who you are yeah. and know what your interests are, what your goals are and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't say enough about just networking. Mm -hmm. it, it's really about who knows you. Yeah. Well, Erica, Deji, thank y'all so much for your time. I think this was just, eye-opening uh, for a lot of people who want to get involved in the game of basketball. So thank you for your time. This has been League Biz. I'm your host, Dennis Botang. Botang. <laughs> and thank you so much. <laughs> Peace. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was great. Thank you so much. I appreciate thank you. you. Dennis, where are you based on?